Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. We're going to be taking a look at the new dungeon released in patch 6.4, the Aether Font. Now this dungeon works in groups of two, so you can pull them within groups of two between each section. Take a nice look at the polar bears clapping on the left hand side as you're passing by. Enjoy the scenic views. There's quite a few in this dungeon. For this first pack, all of the shark enemies have large circular AoEs that they'll throw at random party members. The frost beast has a large cone that he'll also target at a random party member. You just want to move out of these whenever they begin casting them. The circular AoE from these sharks is a, quite a quick cast. You'll need to move quickly if you want to avoid being hit by it. In this dungeon, you'll be getting gear that is just slightly worse than the... Pull up what your battle gear is called. You'll be getting gear that is just a few item levels lower than the Augmenter Lunar Envoy gear. So you will be taking quite a bit of damage in here, especially if you're not geared all the way up. So make sure that you're rotating your cooldowns appropriately. With the second pack, the Jellyfish will have their small frontal line AoEs like all Jellyfish enemies have. So you'll just want to sidestep out of that. And the Frost Beast will still have their large cones. After this second group should bring you over to the first boss here. For this boss, once you pick him up, let's start off with a up sweep. This is going to do party wide damage and he'll cast this repeatedly throughout the fight. This usually will trigger a secondary effect after the initial cast. Tidal breath is going to be a large frontal AOE, so you'll want to get behind him. I'll then move to the center of the platform, cast Body Slam. This will do party-wide damage and then summon multiple rock crystals onto the platform. He'll then cast Upsweep for more party-wide damage and causing the rock crystals to explode. The smaller ones have a small proximity AoE around them, so you just want to stand in between them. He'll then do Body Slam one more time, this time causing four large rock crystals. These have a much larger explosion radius, so you'll want to figure out where they are away from the side of the platform and then move towards that side. There will be only one safe area on the entire platform to avoid overlapping any of the AoEs. He'll follow this up with a Flood Stide, which is going to do a circular AoE on all party members, so you'll just want to spread out as soon as the rock formations explode. He'll then do a group up mechanic that you'll want to group to split the damage for, followed by another tidal breath, so you'll immediately want to get behind him after the group up mechanic. He'll then do another body slam, this time summoning both the small and the large rock formations. The small ones will explode first, so your best bet is to stand underneath the large rock formations while identifying where the hole will be after the small ones explode so that you can quickly reposition after the small ones explode to avoid the large explosion. Immediately after this, he'll do a tidal breath, so you'll want to get behind him. Followed by a sonic bloop which is going to do his tank buster ability. So you just want to help mitigate this as much as possible. Follow up with another upsweep for more party wide damage. And I'll actually do this two times in quick succession. Proceeding into the next section, the penguin type enemies do not have any abilities that you'll need to watch out for. The yaks and troll type enemies do have AoEs that you'll want to sidestep out of. Take 
take in a couple more of the views while you're passing along here. See all the penguins. In the, this section, the golems will have circular AoEs and the ham crystals will have cone AoEs. They usually throw these at random party members, so you'll just need to move out of these depending on who they target. And this will take you over to the second boss. Now for the second boss, he'll start off the fight casting Battle Cry. This is just going to do party wide damage that you'll need to heal through. Follow it up with a lightning leap. This is a rather long cast, but it is a large circular AoE that you'll want to avoid standing in that will throw out lines that will curve around the platform that will expand and cause damage to anyone near them. So you'll need to be standing in between these. After the lines explode, he'll cast lightning leap one more time, followed with the line AoEs again, before casting Ripper Claw for his tank buster. He'll then do a spinning claw, which is just going to do a circular AoE around him, followed by four line AoEs that again will expand, causing AoE damage to anyone inside of them. He'll then do another battle cry for party-wide damage, and this time also putting an AoE on the outside of the platform, so everyone will need to group in towards the middle. At this time, he'll do four lightning rampages in a row, so you'll need to avoid each of these circular AoEs while also standing in between the line AoEs that will be going out. I'll then do a lightning claw for a group up mechanic, so you'll want to stay grouped to split this damage. You'll then want to move out of the purple effect of the Lightning Claw, as after a few seconds it will explode, causing more damage to anyone inside. He'll follow up with another Ripper Claw on the tank. Then doing Electric Eruption. This will cause a small circular AoE under all party members that will explode shortly afterwards so after the initial aoe you'll want to reposition yourself to move out of this secondary explosion the next set of ads does not have any abilities that you will need to watch out for The Druva and Forlorn in the final pack do have line AoEs that you will need to sidestep to avoid. These are usually thrown at the tank. And this should bring you to the final boss.
During this fight, you will want to keep an eye on the placement of the tentacles and watch for where the safe zones will be, along with keeping an eye out for any abilities that involve the word breath, because you will need to move into a location that is behind him to avoid these. He'll start off with a tidal roar. This is just going to do party-wide damage. After this, he'll begin casting Octo Stroke. He'll rescind all of his tentacles into the ground and then put them back out onto the different platforms. You'll want to check the locations of them and move to where you will have a safe zone. They each do cones in the direction they are pointing. Throughout the rest of the fight, they will be slapping lines down the platform. So you'll just want to make sure that you're not standing in front of any of the tentacles. The next ability you would watch out for will be Vivid Eyes. This will do a donut AoE around the entire platform. You can either move close to the boss or away from him on each of the platforms to avoid this. Saline Spit is going to do a circular AoE on all of the platforms, so you'll need to move into the light blue section in between them to avoid it. He'll then do a Tidal Breath. So depending on where your party is, you'll need to reposition to the other side to avoid this. It does an AoE in the entire section in front of him, so you want to make sure that you're standing behind the arrow on his side. This will make sure that you're not getting hit by this. He'll then bring all of his tentacles back out, so you'll want to reposition back to the safe zone while casting Tidal Roar for more party-wide damage. He'll then do a Telekinesis. This will target three areas around the platform that will, after the cast is complete, will then target onto the platform. So you just need to move on to the section that is not being targeted by any of the outside crystals. At this time, the arms will come back onto the platform, so you'll just want to avoid standing in front of them. He'll follow up with a breath stroke. So again, since it has the word breath in it, it's going to do a large frontal AoE while also doing AoEs from each of the tentacles. So you'll want to make sure that you're behind the arrow on his side while also being out of any AoEs that would come from the tentacle sections. He'll follow up with another saline spit. And then this time he'll combine vivid eyes along with water drops. So you'll have circular AoEs around all party members along with the donut AoE through the middle of all the platforms. So you just need to spread out to avoid these. And then do another telekinesis, which will pick three crystals along the outside of the platform again to launch at the platforms. He'll follow up with another tidal roar along with bringing the tentacles back to the platform to continue slapping it so you'll just want to watch your positioning. And then the fight will start to repeat from the breathstroke ability. But this should be it for the Aether font. I hope this helped everyone out. If it did, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you on the next one.